This is our second installment in a how to bend PVC series here. I'm trying to teach people exactly that, how to bend PVC. And what we're dealing with right now is how to use a forming system to exactly duplicate the bend. And also just how to make sure that you're bending exactly the shape that you want to. What I have right here is something that we call a build-a-bend system. This is basically just chunks of PVC that are one size larger than the pipe that you're actually trying to bend, cut into small pieces and then hot glued onto a form. We used a handmade compass, a large compass, in order to make this arc and then we just glued the pieces down along the line to make sure that it was right. This particular arc was designed for a self-watering greenhouse, but that's not too important. We're not actually going to use it for that. We've got plenty of pieces already. This is really just to show the principles of forming and how to use the form, why it's an advantage. Big thing when you're bending, if you're just trying to hand form or wildly bend things, it's almost impossible to duplicate a shape. But if you use something like this, and there's a lot of different ways you can do it, then you can be sure that every time you make a bend, you're making exactly the same bend and that you're producing exactly the same piece. A couple of things that I've done, I'll kind of get into as this pipe heats up right now. This is 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. It's colored green. The only reason I'm using it is because we're out of the white stuff. But honestly, this is just the same as any other PVC pipe that you might buy at the hardware store. It's just colored. And what you're going to do is put it on the bender, just like before. Close the bend station and wait. The process really doesn't take long though, so don't wander off. Don't be too far away because it happens very quickly. So you just kind of entertain yourself and in a few minutes it's ready. From time to time you're going to want to check the pipe and make sure you just kind of turn it so that the bender stays on the bottom and transfers. It will always heat the part that's closest to it the most. So even though it's heating the entire space, the place where there's positive contact is definitely going to cook more. And if you want to avoid both grill lines on the inside and just a, an uneven heat, what you need to do is just keep rotating that pipe. One of the things you'll see here in a minute is that my pipe is quite a bit longer than the form that I'm actually setting it into. The reason for this is that when you go ahead and you're trying to duplicate something over and over and over again, it's kind of really hard to decide how long it's going to be. There's not The mathematics for measuring this kind of shape are somewhat flawed. And even if you can measure it and you can get a good number, you have to decide, are you, is that for the inside, the middle, or the outside of the pipe? And then transferring that over onto other pipes can be difficult. By running it wild and then placing a cut line on the form, you're actually able to not worry about that. And you're also able to guarantee a very, very consistent output in the long run because what you'll do is bend and then mark and at the end make your cuts. And you'll have the same piece, as many pieces as you might need to make. Very important, very, very, very important to put your gloves on before you take the pipe off the bender. The pipe is not, it, it's strange because it's the right temperature where when you touch it, it really doesn't seem like it's hot. And that's why as I'm turning it inside of the bender, I'm barehanded is because I want to know how soft it is and I want to know where it's at. But when you go to handle it, you've got to have gloves on because what happens is you'll pick it up and you'll hold it and you'll feel like everything is okay and then later on you'll realize that you've actually been very badly burned. And because it's just the right temperature to hurt you without actually causing much pain instantly. So gloves are very, very important. Take it off the bender. It's really cool. Very soft. 
drop it into the form. And then what helps in order to speed the cooling process, and then also, in this case, because it's hot glue holding it down, is to take a wet sponge and run it over the pipe. This cools it off a lot faster, and again, it keeps it from melting that hot glue, because, and you don't have to use hot glue. If you know you're going to be manufacturing the same thing over and over and over again, you can use more permanent solutions. We just use hot glue here because we like instant gratification and because most of these things we're really kind of just doing for fun and demonstration purposes. We're not actually manufacturing anything but the benders themselves. But if you're in a manufacturing business, you want to make a little bit more permanent forms, you can just use these same principles as you set it up to make your life a bit easier. We've got other forming methods, but they're not all hands-free. Some of them will allow for some very interesting shapes, but you've got to hold the pipe in place as it's cooling. And in this case, that's not a problem. Click it down, leave it alone, and come back in a few, it's done. Another thing to remember is to take your gloves off when you're actually using the sponge because if you've got an absorbent material on a glove and you get your sponge wet, you get your glove wet, then what happens if you're doing a long series of bends is that the next time you take one off of the bender, your gloves will transmit that heat with the water right to your skin and it can burn you just as badly wearing gloves with water as it did if you were just using your bare hands. So it's really, really important to be careful about that. And once it's cooled, this is now fully hard. What I'm going to do is mark it for cutting on these lines. And then it'll produce a perfect 90 degree arc that's at the size that we're looking for. You can do this on anything. And again, what that allows is that instead of us having to do a lot of complex mathematics to figure out the length of the pipe or things like that, you just don't worry about it. Run it a little bit wild, make your bend, and come back later on and cut the specific length you want. And PVC is a cheap enough material, and it's a recyclable material, so if you're worried about waste, you can find places who will take it and recycle it. You're not forced to throw it away. And if you do feel like throwing it away, it's cheap enough that it's not that big of a deal. If you're in business, what you get out of it, the return on this, is going to be more than the actual waste cost. And then on the other side, if you're doing it for personal reasons, it's, just, it's not going to cut you that deeply to just throw out the parts that you don't need. So this, now, is a well-formed arc. We've got a cut line here and here to make it the shape, you know, make it the exact size we want. And if I wanted, you see how I could just go ahead, if when I pulled this off and set it down, if I put another pipe on the bender, then right now, right as I'm taking this off and it's marked, cooled, and ready to cut, I could set it aside, take my next pipe off the bender, put it in here, put another pipe on the bender, and then go through the process of wetting this down, spraying it off, and marking the next one for a cut. And that allows you to produce a lot of whatever you're trying to make without the headache of trying to eyeball or trying to fiddle with it or any of those things. So that pretty much does it.